So many of you viewers have seen how the process works of pumping the refrigerant into the condenser if your compressor is still working. Now, if your compressor is not working, you have two options basically. One, you can call a technician, an HVAC company, and have them come and recover the refrigerant from your system into a tank and they'll probably haul it off. This could cost anywhere from three to $500. Option two is to pick up a cheap recovery machine and a tank. Um, this is probably the cheapest recovery machine on the market made by Vivor and the tank. Both of these combined, you will probably spend the same amount and you'll have tools that you can either resell or you could use in the future. So we're gonna be showing you how to take this recovery machine and pull the refrigerant out and put it into this tank. So we're gonna show you the whole procedure from vacuuming this tank to pumping all of the refrigerant into it. Now, in order to legally handle refrigerant, one would need to have an EPA license. So I don't recommend doing any of this unless you have an EPA license. The procedure is pretty easy and you can get a recovery machine without one. But in a future video, I'm going to show how easy it is to get the EPA license, what you need to do to get that. And then you're free to um, work with the refrigerant on your AC system legally. So this unit obviously is not connected to a home. If you are working on a, a unit that's connected to your home, these lines will go inside to your evaporator coil and so you won't have to worry about this process. Now, what we're doing here is we've pumped all the refrigerant into this, but we're acting as if this compressor is shot and we need to get the refrigerant out. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna braise these two, um, we're gonna crimp these down and just braise them tight. And what that will allow us to do is we can take these um, king valves and we can reopen them which all it's gonna do is connect the refrigerant from here to here. Right now, the refrigerant stops here and can't go any further. If we open this right now, the refrigerant will just blast out of this tube and we don't want that. So we're going to crimp these, braise it, and then we'll proceed with recovering the refrigerant. Now here's a little pro tip for you. If you turn on the acetylene like a lot of people do, you'll end up with a bunch of soot coming out of here before you turn the oxygen on. So what I like to do is just ever so slightly crack the oxygen first, then open the acetylene, and you will prevent that from happening. All right, so our lines have been braised shut. If your lines are still connected, you can disregard that part, but for some of you, that may have been helpful. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our vacuum on our tank. That's a quick process, but we wanna make sure that there's no oxygen or contaminants in this tank first before we introduce the refrigerant um, from this unit into that tank. All right, so here's what we got. We're gonna make sure all of our gauges uh, fittings are tight. This goes over to my vacuum pump. So low and high will go to the tank here and make sure both of these are good and tight. This tank has an auxiliary port with a ball valve. So I'm gonna hook my um, micron gauge up to this guy. So everything is gonna be open here and we'll start pulling a vacuum as soon as we cut our vacuum pump on. For those of you in the field who haven't seen this yet, this is the Navac 3 CFM vacuum pump and I have a Milwaukee to Makita adapter. So I can run all of my Milwaukee batteries with this setup and I don't have to have different kinds of batteries floating around my truck. So let's go ahead and get this started and get our tank vacuum pulled. As you can see, this pump has a slow start. Um, it's very efficient. You can get one hour of full runtime with one battery pack and we can pull down a whole system in 10 minutes. So this single battery will run for quite some time and pull down many systems. We are dropping pretty rapidly now. It's just a couple minutes after we started. So after about five minutes of running with the manifold with these tiny hoses, 
I was sitting at probably 1200 um, microns. So I got out my true blue kit. I went on to the half inch port instead of the three eighths. So we just have it going into the low side. And as you can see, we're already at 370. So this true blue kit is a real game changer. You can do this with a, a manifold set like that, but it's gonna take a long time. But if you have a plug-in one, you can let it run a vacuum for as long as you want. And we'll just get this number as low as possible. And then we'll isolate the tank, and then we can get started with our recovery process. All right, guys, so we're down to 60 microns, and we're still dropping. Um, pretty good, but this is well below the threshold that we need to be. So we're gonna go ahead and close off our tank. We're gonna isolate the tank. Then we can shut down our recovery machine or our vacuum machine rather. All right, so as you can see, our tank is still at 60 microns. We're gonna go ahead and close this guy off. We can leave that connected, doesn't really matter. So we have our yellow hose going from the one side around here to the outlet of our recovery machine. On the inlet side, we have our filter dryer that came with this recovery machine. And then our other yellow hose is going up to our manifold. Make sure all three of these are tight. And the blue and the red go down to the AC unit itself to these service valves, and we're about to open up these two lines. We're just using this um, specialty, this is made for HVAC. You can find these on Amazon, but if you just use a regular Allen key, you can do that just the same. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up on both sides all the way. The high side. And as you can see, we have pressure now. So we're just gonna open this up all the way and then we can proceed. So the next thing we wanna do after these are opened is we want to purge any air that's in these two lines. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna crack this. Just let enough out to where we can purge that line. This one has liquid, so be careful not to butt too much out and freeze your fingers. Next, what we're gonna do is open the low side, and then we're gonna purge this line that goes to the filter dryer. So we can do that right here. We're just gonna crack this. Just gonna let out some air there. Make sure all of these are still tight. Next, we're gonna put this to recover slow and we're gonna purge this. So we're just gonna let all of the air out of that line. Go ahead and purge it here. So we basically have positive pressure all the way up to our tank and we're going directly to a negative pressure. All of our connections are made. We're going to go ahead and start the machine open these up, and then we'll open that up. We can also set this to fast recovery, and that's going to allow this to recover quicker. So we're at 11.22 right now, starting this process. So we'll come back in a few minutes and show you where we're at. All right, it's 11.32, and we are just at about zero. I'm gonna give it another minute or so for this to get right to zero, and then we will isolate our tank shut our machine off. All right, so we're right at zero. We're gonna go ahead and isolate the tank. So 
both of those are closed. And that is it, folks. That is how easy it is to pump R22 or 410A into a tank with the means of this simple recovery machine. One simple knob start button comes with the filter dryer. So really pleased with this unit. Um, I definitely would say if you're a DIYer or even if you're looking to get into the trades and you don't wanna spend a thousand dollars on a recovery machine, this is an awesome tool. So as far as the teardown here, uh, one thing I wanna note is that make sure you label your tanks so that you know what refrigerant is in here. There might be a little bit of residual um, refrigerant in the lines, as you can see, not much. But basically everything is contained to that tank. And so, you know, we're disconnected from the recovery machine. We just have to disconnect our uh, manifold from the unit itself. Well, it's easy as that folks to recover refrigerant into a tank. Now I can use this R22 to charge other systems that are older. There's still a lot of running R22 systems and this refrigerant is crazy expensive. I have a couple of new tanks and they're about $800 for a tank of this stuff. So if you happen to pull your unit out and you have another rental property that has R22, I think investing in this recovery machine, even if you sell it later, to get some uh, R22 refrigerant that's reclaimed that you can reuse, it's definitely a worthwhile investment. There are many things that homeowners can do when it comes to their HVAC system that don't require calling a technician and paying money for. If you're curious to see what some of those things are to keep your system in tip top condition, check out this video right here and we're gonna show you some of those things that you can do yourself to keep your AC system going for a long time. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.